Hello everyone and welcome to another YouTube Live with me, your acrylic diva, Tisa Blackburn here in San Francisco. How's everybody doing? Hello. Um, I am jumping into YouTube Live this uh, afternoon here in San Francisco and we are going to do layer three on our how to build an abstract painting from the ground up. So I hope you've had a chance to catch layer one and layer two. We're going to jump on over to layer three, but first let me say hello to everybody in the chat room. Cherie from Wisconsin. Hi, it's good to see you. Jane is in here. Jane, it looks like you're telling me your name is really Millie. Hey, Millie. I think we've had a couple of emails back and forth. So I'm really glad to see people jumping into the chat room and get ready with questions because we're going to have time for questions later, okay? In the meantime, let's jump right to the over head camera and take a look at this little sample painting that I have for you. Now as you re may remember from watching our uh, first two videos that we were working on, uh, this is the, the painting that we're working on right now. And, and you can tell just by looking at this one that it's got a lot less going on, a lot less in complexity, a lot less color, many uh, fewer layers than this one. See how complex that is? We got a lot of stuff in the background, a couple, three or four layers of uh, stencils and painting and so forth. See the difference? This one feels very thin and it's, and it is, that's because we've just started it. So layer one went down with fiber paste. We did paint and water um, on the fiber paste. And then of course we had layer two with some painted elements and then we uh, put some polymer medium over that. So just to recap that, hey Malulu La, I see you're back. I'm loving it. Malulu La has my favorite username. I can't, I, I just can't help it, guys. That's an awesome name. <laughs> I don't mean to play favorites, but that's an awesome name. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what's going to happen next. Now, if you look at this guy right here, I'm going to tip it so you can kind of see some of the stuff that's going on here. See the depth of that right there, that stencil? The reason you're seeing a little bit of depth on that guy is because, let me tip it up to the camera, I'm trying to, I'm gonna try and get the edge of it. See that edge right there? So the reason you're getting that depth is because I mixed some light molding paste with some paint before I put it through the stencil. So I'm going to show you how to do that and we'll put those stencils down and then of course we will have to let them dry uh, before we can do our, our pouring on top of it. So see the, the edge of this guy right here? All of that polymer medium and stuff that's been poured. This has got quite a few layers on it. Our first sample painting that we started with, the, the big one, here's the big one. And um, I'm not using this as my sample painting because it's hard for me to fit it under the, the um, camera. But we're going to work in these colors, okay? And the you can see here, if I tip it, let me see if I can tip it so you can see. Can you see the depth on these right here? See the edge on that circle right there? What that means is, get it up to the camera, maybe you can see it a little better. Try in there to get, so you can see that edge. You might get a glare. But the idea here is that I'm taking, in this case, that's glass beads. Um, I'm taking glass beads or light molding paste or something like that, and I'm creating these textural elements. And then I'm pouring polymer medium over the whole thing to create that resin like look, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let me show you how I do that. Let's get our, our uh, painting that we're working on here. And let me, I'm hearing myself in echo. Let me turn that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll start with light molding paste. Now, I like light molding paste because when I put it through a stencil, it holds a tight edge. So I really like it for that. And I don't know if you guys were with me last week, but my palette knife went on vacation, the one that I keep in my video room, went on vacation and I've been traveling. I was up in, believe it or not guys, I was up in Napa 
I got out of Napa right before the whole place went up in flames. So I've got stuff everywhere and I can't find my palette knives. I must own 50 palette knives and I can't find a single one. So I'm going to wing it today with a plastic knife and don't even tell me that my plastic knife went on vacation too because you guys what is it with me and the palette knives I'll find it anyway <laughs> it's like oh my gosh things just disappear on me like I don't know why um, what I want to give it getting back to the topic here I got off topic there um, light molding paste when you put it through a stencil will hold a really nice tight edge so you can get a very clean edge when you're using stencils and I really like that about it okay so today I'm going to use a regular just commercial stencil it's an architectural stencil that you can get at any any place you know um, Office Depot or Michaels or Aaron Brothers and um, I have to stretch to get my palette knife my pretend palette knife because of the 50 palette knives I have I can't find a single one what's that all about all right so uh, let's just sh let me just show you what I mean about this light molding paste first of all it's super fluffy so it feels almost like you're working with ice cream or frosting or something like that super fluffy see how it just hangs on the knife it's not goopy or anything like that so it's really good to make a nice tight edge in a stencil and then I'm going to grab a little Quinn Magenta because you know I can't live without my Quinn Magenta right so here's my Quinn Magenta I'm going to put a drop of Quinn Magenta it's my little tiny bottles you get these little tiny bottles and they go a really long way mix that up and I get yummy Barbie doll pink which you know what I am uh, I'm taking back pink I am I am reinvigorating pink it is no longer going to be just a girly color it's like girl power color that's what I'm going to call it girl power pink okay because that whole pink and blue thing for babies and whatnot you know I'm over it so over it all right so here we go got me some light molding paste I have my stencils and even with this funky knife which isn't a real palette knife even with this funky knife you'll see what I mean let's put some circles down let's put a circle down right here you'll see what I mean about it holding a tight edge now when you're doing stencils overload it don't be chintzy with that um, with the with the gel put more down than you think you need and then you can just wipe it back and you can even make a boo-boo and clean it so check this out I'm gonna intentionally make a boo-boo out there see that right out there made a boo-boo out there I'm gonna clean it pick it up see that nice tight edge yum we love that right and then because I've got that layer of polymer medium down I am going to have plenty of time to just come back and grab that little bit of stuff that went outside the stencil no harm no foul so you don't even have to worry about being super meticulous okay hi Lisa how you doing hi from Massachusetts all right Massachusetts Boston boy I had some good lobster in Boston when I was back there yum 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 all right so now we had a little light molding paste let's have a little glass beads because um, because we can right <laughs> why not I'm gonna clean off my knife my pretend palette knife I'm gonna put out a few glass beads here now when you use the glass beads remember that even though they look kind of milky in the jar remember that anything uh, that is in that kind of milky polymer will dry clear and especially remember to read the the label because this one says translucent textural blend of genuine glass beads dries with good clarity when applied in a thin film what that means is if you get a big clump of this on your canvas it could stay cloudy 
but if you um, put it down in a nice thin layer about like what I'm going to do now let me show you here I'm going to get a little I'm going to use Quinn Magenta again because you can never have too much right and the other thing you're going to notice is that the light molding paste acts like a white paint it is opaque and when you put it into the Quinn Magenta you can see it turned it pink so always remember that when you're working with light molding paste it's going to dry it's going to behave like titanium white um, and add white to the to the color the glass beads on the other hand are going to dry really clear so you're going to they're going to go darker your color is going to be darker when it dries so I'm going to put a drop of Quinn Magenta in there and mix it up let's scoot that to the side a little bit mix this baby up so see how that looks like it's white right now but when it dries it's going to dry darker because all of that polymer is going to clear and you're going to be left with just the color floating in the glass beads and it's so beautiful I can't tell you how gorgeous it is the color that I'm mixing up is going to dry like this that's exactly what I'm doing right there that's glass beads in Quinn Magenta and I'm telling you it is yummy yummy stuff so glass beads in Quinn Magenta I mean does it get any better than that I don't think so all right let's have another circle over here so for contrast you're always going to want to vary the size of your circles and so instead of just one circle I think I'll do a row of circles right across here and if you can see I'm going to try and get this into the frame so you can see what I'm doing it's a little trick I want to show you so check this out see how I'm putting the edge of the stencil on the canvas look what happens when I let go see how it flops up like that well guess what here's a little trick for you take another canvas of the same size slide it in there and oh gee look at that it's like magic it stays put you don't have to have three hands to do this you know trial and error baby trial and error okay let's put a few glass beads down I mean that was worth the price of admission right there wasn't it <laughs> oh, Malulu La you think you have you have fairies playing tricks on you well they're hanging out with my fairies because they stole my palette knife too so I don't know what they're doing with it I mean fairies can't paint right they living in some you know Alice in Wonderland so I need my palette knife back if you see them let me know okay all right so let's have some more glass beads or some glass beads here I'm just gonna go like that schmear schmear just pretend like you're putting cream cheese on a bagel y'all just schmear it baby okay and because I don't need three hands and I can be messy see that like oh gosh it's going over there and oh my golly nah I don't care because I'm gonna fix it up so here's this those are nice and delicious look how delicious those are yum okay can I just say that yum now get this little helper guy out of the way and come back over here take your you could use a q-tip to do this or I'm just gonna take a piece of paper towel and roll it up and I'm just gonna come over here and grab this stuff because of that polymer medium we put down that's an isolation coat and what that means is when you put an isolation coat down like that that means that you can make all kinds of boo-boos on top of it <laughs> that's it's really should be called a boo-boo coat <laughs> oh you guys I just have I have a case of the sillies today I don't know what's wrong with me um, all right so got my polymer medium down there and I can just clean up my glass beads and make it look like I am super fabulous because I never make a mistake right I'm telling you guys all my secrets I hope you are getting that hey Mary Oliver how you doing girlfriend it's good to see you um, 
All right, so there we go. How's that looking? What do you think? Does that look delish or what? Okay, now we've got some glass beads. We've got some light molding paste here. And to keep building on the um, canvas and keep building up that, that those elements and stuff, I'm going to take a little bit of regular fluid paint and I'm gonna this time I'm gonna take a little titanium white and I'm I'm jumping ahead a little bit because honestly um, if I showed you all all the layers that go into this or the big orange one it's about eight or ten layers that's a long involved process right but basically what I'm showing you right now is the you know a couple layers and you just keep repeating them so when this layer gets gets dry I will take another layer of polymer medium oh my polymer medium got stuck to the plate there I will pour down another layer of gloss medium over this whole thing and just keep building it and then pretty soon it's gonna look like this one it's gonna have the glass beads under the polymer and it's it's gonna be all delish with a bunch of different surfaces and stuff okay but you guys get the idea just repeat these uh, just repeat these layers and you'll you'll have basically have it okay so I got a little Quinn magenta I got a little titanium white going there I've got a fine brush and after you get some of these big major elements down then you're gonna want to put in some uh, you know detail type stuff Malulu La has to run out the door alright we will check you later Malulu La and uh, you'll see it the finished uh, the finished video when you get back okay all the best Thanks for joining us. And it looks like, for some reason, it looks like I picked up Quinn Crimson instead of Quinn Magenta. You can see that's a little brown right there. So I really want Quinn Magenta. I want that big punchy pink color. So I've got my titanium white, little Quinn Magenta. I want to make it nice and bright. And I want to, maybe I'll put this over here so you can see me mix a little better. There we go. I want it nice and bright. If you are mixing like this and your paint starts to dry up and stuff, use the glazing liquid. You know my old buddy, the glazing liquid, the one that you can barely read because it has some fingerprints all over it. <laughs> Get some glazing liquid and that will keep your paint wet and workable for a long time. So right now I'm just going to take this light value and I'm going to put a few elements in here. Um, let's have, as a matter of fact, I think I might put a little glazing liquid out right now because things feel like they're trying to dry. So let me put a drop of that out. And it just keeps the paint kind of silky. So I like it, especially if I'm doing things like circles or spirals or whatnot. Keeps the paint feeling kind of silky. So I'm just going to do a few spirals here. And they're going to be kind of subtle. That's all right. This is this would be way underneath this this layer that I'm working on here. Let's make that a little bit darker. I need it to just a little bit more contrast. Let's have another one over here. And we're just adding little elements as we go, right? Let's have a little Quinn Magenta kind of straight up for a little contrast. Maybe a little bit smaller. So see how I'm just adding these elements, little elements for interest. Rotating. Now I'm going to get that titanium white and I am going to add some elements here. 
I'm going to come back in and redo these guys. They didn't have enough contrast before. So we'll just make them a little more accentuated. Get up there so you can see what I'm doing. So just have fun with it. You can look at my Wonderland series to get a feel for how these um, paintings get created and how many layers they have and so on. And I find it very soothing to work on these guys because, you know, I'll just sit there with a tiny little paintbrush and just make little dots, you know, little dots for a couple of hours. Pretty soon I'm all mellow and <laughs> little, little tiny white dots, you know. Um, very different than my great big canvases where I'm working with a five inch brush and flailing paint around. So um, that's kind of the scoop on this guy. The main thing I wanted to show you on this layer was the light molding paste, that nice tight edge, and the glass beads. Now there are several of the golden gels and paste that make a really nice tight edge like that. Just take a look at the Golden website. The paste, anything that says paste is going to be opaque and adding uh, a white or a gray to the color. And then anything that says things like glass beads or coarse molding paste or coarse pumice or anything like that, that's going to have what we call aggregates in it. That's chunky stuff. And some of those chunky things don't make good uh, gels for for a stencil. Glass beads is a good one for stencils because the the glass beads are so tiny that they they do well in a stencil. Clear granular gel is a little bit too chunky for a stencil and some of the other ones but for the most part you'll get really good stencils with a paste and um, uh, and they will add a white element. Sometimes a white element if it's a paste and then glass beads and um, uh, clear granular gel will be more translucent. Okay, so just pay attention to that. You will never see me use clear granular gel through a stencil though. I will, I will use it in other ways, but I won't use it through a stencil because the elements inside it are too big. Okay, now once this was, is dry, um, I will pour another layer of polymer medium over it and of gloss medium. I'll pour another layer of gloss medium over the top of this once it's dry and then I will repeat the process. So these layers, this could be layer number three of six or ten, just depends, okay? Alright, so that's kind of the building block of how to make an abstract painting from the ground up and I'm gonna go over here and see if you all have some questions for me. Um, Hey guys, how you doing? Let me see if there are questions. Gonna go to the chat box. All right, let me see. Questions, questions. Here we go. Whoops, lost my chat box. Hang on. Where'd you guys go? I'm gonna go to this chat box. It's easier for me. All right, let's see. Mary wants to know, any tricks to not losing too much polymer medium on a pour? Well, one thing that you can do is line the uh, whatever you're using to pour in. Uh, you can use a Tupperware container. You could use a cardboard box. As a matter of fact, I pour in this box sometime. I put a, a, a white plastic garbage bag in there, line it, and then I use this to pour in. Uh, you could do that, but whatever you do, line the bottom of it with clean freezer paper. Just get a big roll of freezer paper. You can get it at Safeway or Rayleigh's or something. And it's not very expensive. It'll last forever. And um, you could line the, the bottom of your Tupperware thing, your cardboard box, whatever it is, with that freezer paper. Clean every time. And then when you pour the polymer down, that clean polymer will go down on a clean sheet of freezer paper and you can scoop it up and use it again. So there you go. Millie wants to know why not throw on some glitter. Well girlfriend, you know what? Glitter is always good. You throw glitter on there if you like. <laughs> 
go ahead, throw some glitter around. See if I care. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up a little uh, early today. We're going to go a little bit shorter than normal because like I said, I'm I'm getting out of town in a few days and I've got a bazillion things to do. Um, but I wanted to make sure you guys got this layer number three. And then keep me posted on your work out there. You can always send me um, stuff on Facebook. Get over to Facebook, facebook.com backslash Acrylic Diva. Just look for me over there. I think it's Acrylic Diva or Acrylic Diva Fine Art. Just put the, put the Acrylic Diva in there and it'll pop up and um, then you know I want to see them shoot me some JPEGs or, or photos of what you're doing because I love to see what you guys are doing and then of course always get back with me over on Facebook if you have questions because that's the easiest way to get me questions now I don't want to forget to tell you about my patreon page patreon.whoops.com backslash acrylic diva there is some fun stuff coming up over on my Patreon page for patrons only. And you can join for as little as a buck a month. Super cheap. But I've got some cool stuff coming up for you guys. Kind of a secret. But um, check it out and see what you think. We've got some, some cool things going on. Is it Cherie? Cherie from Wisconsin. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And be sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button that's down below. Make sure you hit the notification bell that's next to it because then that will send you an alert when I go live in case you forget. And I'm usually live every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. But while I'm in New York, it's going to be a little wonky. So be sure you check that because I may be doing some YouTube live on the fly. Okay? You never know. You never can tell where I'm going to pop up. All right. Who wants paint? I've got goodie bags I'm already got to give away. So I've got, this is my last time before New York, I think. We might have one more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a piece of paper right over here and I am going to write a number between one and I'm not going to use that piece of paper I'm going to write a number between one and ten you guys guess it and I will send you paint and I'm looking can you believe this I'm an artist with no paper I have no paper okay that's the number from last week so I'm going to exit out and I'm going to write a new number down. Okay, so in the meantime, uh, you guys guess in there a number between one and ten. If two people guess the same number and it's close and it's the number, we'll do a runoff, whatever that's called. The other thing I have to tell you is that um, I can only send you paint if you're in the United States. I have to say this every week, you guys. I know I sound like a broken record. But I can only send you paint if you're in the United States because something the U.S. Post Office, blah, blah, blah. Okay? All right. So Cherie and Bonnie, you guys guess again because you got a, you, you tied. So you guys guess again. Um, in the meantime, who has a question for me about acrylic paint? Because I am your diva. I'm your, <laughs> I'm your acrylic diva. You guys keep me busy. You got to keep me busy. I get in trouble otherwise. Okay. So um, questions for me. Polymer gloss medium, gels and mediums. What the heck do you all need help with? We've got a lot of numbers coming in. Okay. Should we guess again? All right. I'm going to let it roll off for a little bit more. And where did my paper go that I wrote the number on? Oh my God, you guys, I went to Napa. I was in Napa for three days and we had a fabulous time. We did a lovely plein air class and I don't know what I did with my paper. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, I found it. We had a lovely time in Napa and um, I'm telling you, I, I haven't unpacked. It's just nutty. Asha, having fun playing. However, what is a good size canvas to work on for this project? Well, you know, these canvases right here are only, I think these are 8 by 8 or 10 by 10. And then 
the big one, this one is 12 by 12, bigger than my head. <laughs> so work on whatever size you like, you know, whatever size floats your boat. All right. Um, drawing too fast, any tips? Depends on where you are. Where are you at? F coach. Coach A, where are you at? Are you in Arizona? Are you in Death Valley? Or are you in uh, Louisiana? Big difference. Big, big difference. I have answers for you depending on where you live. So get back to me. I'll look for that. Denise, how do I use tar gel to pour with and why do you like it? Oh, tar gel. Let me sing your praises. Well, how do you use tar gel to pour? Like this. You put it in a cup. You take a canvas and you pour it on. <laughs> I'm not being facetious. That's really what I do. Um, I've got some videos on this channel, I believe, that show some tar gel pouring. But one thing I want to say is that uh, the reason I like it is because I can get a pretty thick layer, thicker than gloss medium, and I can get a deeper, more resin-like effect with fewer layers. I still have to do multiple layers, but I can get there faster with tar gel than I can with polymer medium. Um, so that's why I like it. I just like it because it's gorgeous. Um, Lisa, I like self-leveling gel, but I notice you don't use it much. Can you say why? Yeah, self-leveling gel is like a problem child. It's a problem child. It has to be, you know, you got to have a level. It shows, it shows a tool mark more than I like. So if I come across it with a blade, I can see the blade mark. And I don't like that. And that's also why I don't use a blade in tar gel. I pour it or I use a brush. I don't use a blade. So there's a video on this channel called Clear Tar Gel Hard Candy or something like that. I need to update it, but it shows um, the the way that I use tar gel as a as a glossy layer. And self leveling, I've just had too many trouble, too many problems with it. You know, it runs off the edge of the canvas. It moves in a different way than tar gel does. And I, ha I think tar gel, I think I'd get better control with tar gel. Um, Cochet, Cape Cod, the E is silent on my last name. Coach, then I'm going to say coach, like a stagecoach. Um, Cape Cod, Mass. Oh, I love Cape Cod. Provincetown, woohoo. I love P-Town. Um, so if you're over there in, in Massachusetts, then you're going to have a fair amount of humidity in your air. And I do know it gets warm over there, a lot warmer than San Francisco. But the humidity in the air will keep the paint drying um, slower than it would if you were in Arizona or Death Valley. That's why I asked. So I think the thing that's going to be best for you, depending on how you paint. Now, if you're putting out this much paint on your canvas, a tiny little bit right there, it's going to dry up like that, right? I recommend that you put out some paint. See that right there? That puddle? So I'm going to go to the overhead camera so I can show you this. Um, so put out a puddle of paint and like so and then take your glazing liquid and that's what you want. You want glazing liquid and see how I have this is glazing liquid right here. So you can do one of two things. You can either put about yay much glazing liquid and that much paint and see if that helps. You can add as much glazing liquid as you want to the paint. It's not going to make it funky or weird. And it's not going to make it sticky or gooey. It's just going to uh, make it feel silky. And it's going to stay wet longer. So I can have that much glazing liquid in my paint. Or let's move the glazing liquid over here. Let's put some more out. I'm going to put a puddle out. So I could have this much glazing liquid and put in this much paint and I'm going to get a very different look. This is going to be super th transparent but it's not going to change the color. When it dries it's going to dry clear. 
So even though this looks like I've lightened it, I haven't. But this is going to stay wet a very long time. So my advice is to take the, the glazing liquid, get your glazing liquid, and do some testing with it. You know, say this is 90% glazing liquid, 10% paint. Put that out like so, you know. Put it out on your palette. Come back and check it. Check it in an hour. Check it in two hours. Check it the next day. See what kind of drying time you get between this mixture and this mixture. Right? You get where I'm going? The spectrum is very wide here. The, the margin for error is, is huge. I mean, it's really hard to mess it up when you're using glazing liquid because it just, it just works. It just works. So there you go. I hope that's helpful. And if it's not, let me know. All right, so now back to the guessing. I've got um, Sherry and Bonnie guessed again. So I've got F Coach is eight, Lisa E is, is three, Denise is four, five, five, two, Jeff and, or Jeff, I don't know if you're, is that Jeff Bridges? No. <laughs> Jay Bridges and Cherie, you guys have a runoff there. But I'm going to say, before I tell you guys to guess again, let me see who's closest. Okay, we've got a bunch of duplicates here. Asha, Coach, you guys are duplicates and you guys are closest. So I tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys, you guys guess one more time for me because uh, we have so many duplicates. Guess one more time for me and let's make it a number between 1 and 15. 1 and 15 and I'm going to, because we have so many people, it would be Jill. Hey Jill! <laughs> I was like, is Jeff Bridges in my chat room? <laughs> that would be hilarious, right? Oh, I'm such a dingbat. You guys have no idea. I'm I'm kind of all at sixes and sevens because I was up in Napa for three days and I blah, blah, blah. Okay, so while you're guessing, a couple things coming up. I'm going to have you guys run those guesses again for me because there were so many duplicates. And remember, it's a, it's a number between 1 and 15. Um, things coming up. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, I am going to be over at Artists and Craftsmen on Saturday doing a live yeah Lisa everybody everybody guess again um, I am going to be over at Artists and Craftsmen doing a live uh, lecture demo and uh, in reality in the real world and I'll be over there answering questions showing paint and um, I think there might be goodie bags over there too so there you go be sure you get over to the Facebook page for Artist and Craftsmen in San Francisco and register for that um, uh, lecture if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, what else is coming up? There might be, I believe there is another plein air workshop coming up in December and then starting in January we're going to be starting the seven week painting challenge. Woohoo! So that'll be coming up. If you are not on my mailing list, get over to the comment section under the, um, the video. Get over there in the show notes. There's a link to the uh, newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter and be sure you get on there in the next day or so because that October newsletter is going to go out and the announcement for the seven week painting challenge is going to go out and it's only going to have 12 spots. There's only 12 spots y'all because there's only so much of me to go around. <laughs> I know it seems like there's a lot but there's not that much. And the, um, the 12 week painting challenge is live. It's live. So it's going to be fun. Okay. I know, Mary Oliver, I wish you were there too. You could heckle me. <laughs> All right, my number's coming in. All right. Cherie, 12, 4, 10, 12, 9, 13, 13, 8, 9, 1, 15. All right, it looks like Denise is closest because my new number was number 11. Denise, I think that's right. Yep, I think Denise won. Denise, you won some paint, girlfriend. 
So I am going to have you send me an email over at tisa at acrylicdiva.com. Send me an email and in the email put I won paint. Okay? Um, Jane, I can't find the newsletter. The newsletter hasn't gone out yet for October. So be sure that you sign up for my mailing list. And you know what? I'm going to put the link for the mailing list here, you guys. So you can sign up right now. And um, do I know where that link is? Let's see if I can find it. Hang on a sec. Hang on one sec. Here we go. Okay. Here's a link. And... There you go. If you hit that link right there, that'll send you, that'll open up a box and you can subscribe to my studio newsletter and that will make sure that you're getting the announcements for upcoming stuff. All right, Denise, woo! Send me an email that says I won paint. And then I've got several of them going out. They'll probably go out today or tomorrow and you will get some paint in the mail. All right, you all, I'm going to wrap it up. I've got a bazillion things to do. Uh, Mary, how do you know if you're on the mailing list? I'm pretty sure you are, but just double check and see if you got a newsletter from me. Just Google on your email, just Google Studio Newsletter or Acrylic Diva or something like that. But I, I'm pretty sure you're on the mailing list. You can always go and sign up again. And if you're not, I mean, if you're already on there, no harm, no foul. Okay. All right. All right, you all. Any Anybody have any more questions before I sign off? I'm going to just jet out the door and uh, do all kinds of crazy nonsense. Have a good trip. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Sherry. I'm going to have a great trip to New York. I'm going to go see Bette Midler in Funny Late. I mean, um, Hello, Dolly. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm going to the Museum of Modern Art, of course, but I'm going to go see Bette Midler, too. So... <laughs> That's going to that's going to be nutty, right? All right, you all have a fabulous fabulous day. And I am going to get to the studio and do a million things that I've got going on. But what do I always say to you guys? What's my parting words always? Keep painting. All right. I'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Take care. <laughs>